In this video, we're going to see an example of using cues in a more real world type situation. In this case, we'll see how we can use cues to simulate a ticket waiting line where customers queue up just like you would waiting for a cashier. And you have some number of cashiers and they're going to each take care of the customer. And then once they're done, the next customer that's waiting in the queue can be served. So first, let's look at our customer class. Each customer is going to have an arrival time and a departure time. In the constructor, we will set their arrival time, but we'll leave their departure time for later. We'll have a, a getter for the arrival time and a getter and setter for the departure time. And then we'll have this function total time, which subtracts their departure time from their arrival time. And that tells us how long in total they had to wait in order to purchase their ticket. So there's not a lot of code here, but what's happening is conceptually, I think, somewhat confusing. So I'll go through the code, and then we'll also see a diagram of what's going on. So a couple of constants that we're going to have. Process time is going to be how long it takes each cashier to handle one customer. So once a customer reaches a cashier, it takes two minutes to perform that transaction. Now this is a constant, but we can set it to whatever value we want. So one of the things we could do if we wanted is we could train the cashiers to be faster, and that's another way we can reduce waiting time. But right now, we're just going to leave it at 120. But there's nothing stopping us from also running this, let's say, with 90 seconds or so forth, just to see what the impact is of a more efficient cashier on the total waiting time. Then num customers is how many customers we want to model. And so we're going to model 100 customers showing up. And then max cashiers, what we're going to do is we're going to start with one cashier, see what the waiting time is. And then we'll add another cashier and another cashier. And the point is, let's try to find a cashier who gives us a waiting time that we're comfortable with. So let's say the average waiting time needs to be below some threshold. We can run this simulation and it'll tell us for this number of cashiers, this is what the average waiting time is. We can choose the number of cashiers that minimizes that wait time or that lowers it below whatever our threshold is. So in our main method, we're going to create a customer object and we'll use that just to simplify some of the calculations. We'll create a queue of customers, and that's where we'll add all the customers. We'll create an array for the cashiers that'll keep track of each cashier's time, and the cashiers will be 0, 1, 2. They'll be the indices of the array. And then we'll compute the total time, the average time for each customer, and we'll also get, some, get a start time and a depart time for each customer. That allows us to get that customer's time, which we'll add to the total time. And once we're done, we can average all of that up. So this outer loop, what we're doing is we're running the simulation for one cashier, then two cashiers, all the way up until we get to max cashiers. So for each iteration of the loop, we're going to initialize the cashier array to zero because before we start the simulation, all the cashiers are at time zero, they're waiting for a customer. And then we'll also enqueue the customers and each customer will have an arrival time 15 seconds after the previous customer. So they'll show one customer will show up 15 seconds, another and so forth. Now we don't want to actually wait 15 seconds. So we're going to just add time to this cashier array so that we can simulate that wait time, but we don't actually have to wait 15 seconds. And we initialize our total time counter to zero. This is all the initialization that takes place when the simulation starts running for some given cashier count. And that cashier count is this outer loop. So keep in mind, this outer loop is just saying how many cashiers we have. So we're going to run the entire simulation max cashiers number of times. The actual simulation is this while loop, and then we calculate the results. So let's take a look at what this looks like after we've initialized everything. The cashiers are all set to zero, and then the customer queue is filled up. Now, I only did seven customers because it would be hard to fit 100 customers here, but the idea is, is similar. And you'll notice they all have an arrival time 15 seconds apart, and we start off with a departure time of zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to dequeue a customer, and that customer is going to be handled by the first cashier available. So if we go back to the code, let's see what happens once we dequeue that customer at the start of this enter for loop. So we get the error arrival time, and if the arrival time is greater than the cashier time, then we set the starting time of that transaction to when the customer arrived. Otherwise, they'll have to wait for the cashier, so the start time is going to be 
whatever the cashier's time has. Then the departure time is going to be when they started plus the time it took them to actually be processed. Once that's calculated, we set the departure time of the customer to that time. We set the cashier to that depart time because that's when they're now available. And we'll add what that total time for the customer is to the total time for the entire simulation. So after we've run through the first iteration of the loop, the arrival time was zero and it, they departed at 120. So the total time we're going to add 122 and then the new time for the cashier is going to be 120, meaning they can't handle someone until 120 seconds has have passed. And again, we're not waiting that long. We're just adding the time to this variable to keep track of how long they had to wait. So then we DQ the second one. The arrival time is 15 and the departure time will be 135 because it took 120 seconds. We'll make 135 this cashier's availability time. And so after we've completed that inner loop, we'll have two customers left in the array and you see what the cashier's available time is. Now where this gets interesting is the next time through the array, now the customer arrived before the cashier was ready. So that start time is gonna be the same as the cashier's available time. The cashier's new available time will be 240 because that's how long it'll take before, first off they handle the, this, this customer and the actual time that this customer waited would be 240 minus 75, which is 165. And that's what we would add. That's this customer's actual wait time. They didn't have to wait the entire 240 seconds because they didn't arrive until 75 seconds after the simulation started. And then once we run through the second iteration of, of that iter loop, you can see that we only needed two cashiers here. And so this will be the final time in the cashier array once we're actually done with the entire simulation. So here's that for loop. Again, we do this for each customer and this for loop runs until either we run out of cashiers for that iteration of the while loop or until the customer queue is empty, meaning there's no more customers to handle. Once this while loop is done, meaning all the customers have been processed, then we can calculate the average time by dividing the total time for each customer divided by the number of cash customers. And that gives us the result and some statistics. Now, again, we run this from the numbers of cashiers from one to 10. And so we'll get a nice table that'll help us decide how many cashiers to hire. So when we run this, you can see that with two cashiers, the average wait time was 2,300 seconds, almost 40 minutes. Three cashiers cut that almost in half. And then the, adding a fourth cashier reduced it even further. And eventually, once we hire eight cashiers, the average time is 120 seconds. Now that's 120 seconds. Now that's the ideal amount of time because you can't be any faster than 90 seconds. So hiring that ninth and 10th cashier doesn't make any sense economically. Now we could also say that, hey, we're happy if the average wait time is five minutes. And so then we could save a little money and only hire six cashiers. And just to show you, if I change the process time to 90 seconds and run, now you'll see that we actually can get to three minutes of wait time with just five cashiers. And with six cashiers, we have a one minute wait time. So again, it's a, it's a balance between training the cashiers to be faster or hiring more cashiers. Either way, we can reduce that total wait time. And then it's up to the business owner to decide what they want to optimize for. So that's a really quick introduction to how we can use queues to simulate things that involve waiting.